Hey everyone, Jonathan here. Welcome to my channel. So Forest Pack 7 Beta is out now and with it we could take a preview of some of the features that we could expect for this upcoming version and some of them, some of these features stand out like the ability to scatter lights. We finally have that ability. I mean we've been waiting for this feature for a long time from both Forest Pack and Rail Clone. Possibility of being able to scatter lights with um, Forest Pack seems to be pretty interesting um, as well as the ability to apply color corrections to all the assets within a single forest pack item. Uh, that seems to be pretty interesting as well. We're getting a new 3D uh, preset library with uh, including some new models. We're getting uh, uh, the ability to create hedges as well as some uh, 3D scan models of tree stumps. So a couple of goodies there and a few UI improvements as well that will make our workflow a little bit easier. So like I mentioned, some of the standout features that um, that will come with this version of Forest Pack 7, um, particularly the ability to scatter lights and color correct seems to be pretty interesting. So let's take a look at, at how that's working. I downloaded the beta version, so let's see how that works. Um, so here we have a scene, the scene that I created for my um, how to scatter grass tutorial recently. You're welcome to see that video if you want to see how I created the scene. It's just a simple um, plain simple ground with some grass scattered on it and a few stones and some weeds. So let's see how we could scatter the lights. I have uh, an HDRI for the image lighting up the scene. It's a dusk image uh, so that um, we could see the lights better. Here I have just a simple V-Ray sphere light. Let's go ahead and create um, let's go ahead and scatter that light with forest pack. So right away we'll see a difference in this version here and that we have two options here, generate and icon mode, no more custom edit mode. There was a third one in the previous versions. Now we just have these two modes and, um, and honestly that makes sense. Uh, we either want to generate or we want to go in by hand and, and place the scatter the items one by one. And these are the only two options we really need, but there's a, a third option here that seems to be pretty interesting it's called source objects. And when we check this populate from selection, now, once I select what I want to populate, it'll automatically incorporate that into the geometries that it will scatter once I create the forest pack item. Before, we used to have to create forest pack item, then go to settings, and then add one by one the objects that we want to scatter, whether it be trees or plants or shrubs. Now, we have the ability of just selecting all the tr trees or shrubs or whatever it is we want to scatter, make sure this is checked, and then it'll automatically incorporate all those items into the geometry list of items to be uh, spread and scattered. So that seems to be pretty interesting. So in this case, we're going to scatter the light. We got that light selected. This is checked, generate, and let's click on the surface that we want to scatter the light on. So let's go ahead and put the light on a grid. Let's call this forest pack item just lights. And let's go to um, distribution. Let's make this a grid and spread out the lights, let's say 175 feet. All right, and let's take a look and see what this looks like. And there we go. The lights are scattered. They're on a grid just as I uh, distributed them. And um, these should all be instances of each other. So if I modify the source light, the rest should be updated. Let's test it out. So if we make the light slightly smaller, let's make them six inches. Yep, there you go. And let's say you want to make them invisible. Let's see if this works. There you go. So um, as you can see, it's pretty cool. I mean, this opens up a, a whole bunch of possibilities. Um, say you want to light up a forest in the distance or you want to uh, light up a, a city um, or the interior of a building, perhaps. Uh, it opens up some new possibilities being able to do this with um, with Forest Pack. So it's a pretty interesting feature. Let's try moving up the lights. Let's go ahead and select the Forest Pack item. Let's move the lights up. Let's see if that works. Let's stop the test render. Let's go down to transform. And let's move the lights up. So on the z-axis, say 200 by 200 percent. All right, 
and see if it works. The lights should now be above the ground by 200%. Yep, there it is. So the lights have shifted up, and I mean, if we have uh, lights on the poles or whatnot, we could use this feature to move the lights up and put them um, more where the bulbs, wherever the bulbs are hanging. So again, pretty interesting feature. We'll open up some possibilities for for lighting up our scenes in, in different ways and um, can't wait to play around with it. But there's a couple more features that are interesting in this new release. Let's go ahead and get rid of um, this forest pack item here because our next test will be a little bit more lit up, a little bit more bright. We're gonna test out the color correction features. So let's go on here, increase the camera exposure. Okay, that'll work. So the color correct um, feature in this latest release of Forest Pack seems to be interesting as well because it'll allow us, it'll allow us to change and color correct all the assets within a particular um, Forest Pack item. So that for instance, if we wanna change the, um, the grass to a different color, or different hue or saturation, uh, increase saturation or decrease saturation, we cannot do that. If we come here under, under material, you'll see um, a section called color correction. And let's play with it, let's try it out. Let's move the slider this way, see what happens. There it is. So in this case, the grass, just color correcting the grass. And um, and I gotta say, that's pretty cool. I mean, being able to color correct on the fly like that, all the assets, before we used to have to go one by one, modifying the materials for each item, being able to do for all the assets at one seems to be pretty interesting. Say you wanna convert the grass into a field of purpley flowers, or if we wanna make it more like hay, for instance, instead of a green grass, uh, opens up some interesting possibilities here. And I believe if you want to, uh, disable if you want to disable for one particular asset um you would just come on here under let's go ahead and stop the render you would just acquire the material and go under the forest pack um node forest pack material node and then you just here you go under apply color correction, if you uncheck this um, this option, that one particular asset or material would not have these effects applied. So again, this is useful for color correcting all the assets at once. If there's one particular asset that you would not want to apply these settings to, you just come in here and uncheck it under apply color correction. So again, this is pretty pretty interesting stuff. A um, couple of UI fixes as well. They changed, uh, they updated the, the library the library browser. Um, it's a little bit cleaner, a little bit sleeker, and um, I believe they're gonna apply a couple new features uh, in the next few uh, versions, the next few weeks, especially as we get closer to the final release. Also, we can expect some uh, new 3D goodies, um, like the ability to create hedges. I believe they're gonna create a library for hedges as well as tree stumps. So again, pretty interesting stuff. You can come here to their website and they'll um, they have a list of all the new things that you can expect. So we'll, we'll keep an eye and see what the other changes and tweaks they apply as we get closer to the final release. Um, so if you want to try it out, head on down to the i2 website and uh, you'll find the link to download the beta version there. You can test it out, see how it works with your system. Once again, guys, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, until next time.